My husband got to know that I was cheating and that's when we got divorced. I was drinking heavily. I would go to pubs and drink with my cousins and we would always go out from Friday until Saturday. I didn't decide. He decided that he wanted divorce. But the divorce, it was not, it didn't give me the divorce papers. It was just saying I should move back from his home to my home. My name is Lerato Rosemary Ramlachwani from a small town in the free state called Mahlatsweza Excelsior. Originally now based in Welcome because I'm working there and I'm a daughter from my mom. Her name is Masarami Ramlachwani and my dad is Sarami Peter Peer. They were originally staying in Virginia in the free state. Today I'm here to tell about my HIV journey and how it all started. When I was 17 years old, I fell pregnant before I got married. I was still in high school doing my grade 11. When I was doing my grade 11, I then had to get married because I was already pregnant. And then I agreed to be married because I was afraid of raising my daughter alone. And then I was blessed with a daughter. I named her Tuarello. My other name is Matuarello. From that, I stayed with my husband, my ex-husband, for two years. We got divorced because I had to go back to school to finish my metric. As I was doing my metric, I became a child again and started doing whatever that the teenagers were doing and forgot that I'm married. I fell in love with this other guy from also from the small town that I was staying in. He was popularly known. They were rich at, from his home. I fell in love with him and then my husband got to know that I was cheating and that's when we got divorced. My marriage was, I, I'm the one who told my mom that I want to get married. And she had to agree because I think she was protecting me. And we talked about it with the guy who was the father of my child. We talked about it and then he said he's also ready to get married. So it was a customary marriage. We didn't uh, have a white wedding. We just signed at court. And that's how we got married. Uh, my boyfriend and I, he was my boyfriend by that time, we decided to sit down and talk about us getting married. My child was one year old. I went back to school. I had to finish my grade 12. Went back to school, did my grade 11, and then grade 12. Um, when I was still in school, I started dating. My marriage was, was okay. I don't wanna lie, I'm the one who started with the cheating and everything because um, my husband was not around most of the time. He was working, he was a teacher. He's not that old, he's three years older than me. I did enjoy being married to him because by that time I loved him. <clears throat> Once I started dating this guy, everybody told my husband that I'm seeing this guy and my husband was very angry and he started confronting me and asking me, I deny everything. I think after two or four months he decided that I should leave and go back home. I went back home when I was at home I got into drinking. I was drinking heavily. I would go to pubs and drink with my cousins and we would always go out from Friday until Saturday. Sunday 
it doesn't matter any other day that we want to drink we'll drink and i think most of the time because um i was from a marriage and i had everything by that time people would see me and say i'm beautiful and some men would use me and my cousins would also use me to get alcohol and after my husband confronted me with the me dating and what and what cheating on him uh I didn't decide he decided that he wanted divorce but the divorce it was not it didn't give me the divorce papers it was just saying i should move back from his home to my home and then i agreed because i knew that i was at fault and i didn't ask any questions i had to start over again and knowing that i'm back at home i'm not married anymore and then I started drinking. I think it was a phase of saying I want to get over the fact that I'm divorced because everybody was calling me names saying that nere my kids. But uh I started drinking heavily. Every weekend I would go out and drink. I would go to places that I don't even know. I would wake up some day sleeping with a guy that I'm not I don't even know what happened. I would ask myself how did I get here how is it that I'm here and I feel like I was used because by that time I was still young I went back to my mom and welcome my child was sick I still remember my mom took my child to the doctor and then my mom said It's fine you can stay here with me for as long as you want. And then I said I'm looking for a job because already my, I have done my matric, I passed my matric. Um I found a job at a restaurant. I worked there for two months. I got sick. This one time I didn't know what was wrong with me. I felt the pain in my stomach. My mother was working as a domestic worker she was working for a doctor when i got home i told her that i'm not okay the doctor said i must go to the hospital immediately because there's something wrong with me i went to the hospital when i got there i had to be operated i don't know what do they call it i was told that i have appendix but today i don't believe that i had an appendix I believe that I was pregnant and my child was sitting in a troop because even after that I had symptoms of somebody who was pregnant I got so sick that uh kila ka tswa le tho because people would be saying people who have uh, matopa they are HIV positive and what but I didn't think that through as I was from the hospital i didn't go back to work i couldn't because i was not okay and then my mom said how about you go back to college and finish your studies i went back to college at college this one time they were they were having uh, this clinic uh, i don't know what do they call them where everybody can just go and get tested i decided to go and get tested I told my friends that I went to test. I think it's long overdue that I get tested because I know what is it that I've done in my past. I went there and get tested and then I found out that I'm HIV positive. I didn't even feel surprised because I knew my background and I know what was going on. I went to my mom. I told her that I'm HIV positive. and she was not okay at all mind you i'm the only child she was expecting so much from me and she said she will be there to help me i mustn't tell people about it and i was like 
okay i understand this one time i had a best friend she was also hiv positive and she passed on after she passed on i decided to be open about my hiv status on the platforms on facebook on whatsapp on everything that's how people know about my status and I didn't want to lose myself as I've lost my best friend because of HIV. Today I go by the name of Matsuarello, mommy living with HIV. I think I decided to be open about my status because I want a free HIV generation. And I decided to be open about it because I wanted people to understand that HIV, it's not a death sentence. I'm still here, I'm still living. I've been living with HIV for so long, I think it's 12 years now. In this 12 years that I've been living with HIV, now I'm dating. I'm not dating a man, I'm dating a lesbian. We are also engaged. We've been dating since 2016 and the the romans part I, I feel like people are too judgmental because i'm open about my status but diana she's not she understands where i come from and she's very supportive she's part of my family now and in these 12 years i've been around going to people invites me to their events so that I can come and be a guest speaker at their events. I also get calls from people saying that I need help. How do I do this? How, how long does it take for me to be undetectable when I'm HIV positive? So I'm out here to help people know that HIV, it's not a, a death sentence. My daughter is very supportive when it comes to my uh, status because in most cases when I'm maybe on radio or on any platform she would ask her friends that they must listen and when their friends need help maybe somebody's HIV positive she will say let me just ask my mom this and let let me see if she cannot help with this and this me and the father of my child we're not co-parenting he is only supporting the child because I don't think it's going to be easy for him to do the co-parenting. He's now married and I, I respect that. One thing that I, I, I always tell people is that HIV is not a death sentence and being HIV positive doesn't mean that you less of a person than other people. On my Facebook, I'm always there to help people who just find out about their HIV who don't know how to deal with their HIV status and for the single moms who don't know how to be open to their kids about their status I'm always on my Facebook it's Matwarelo Rosemary Ramlashwani and I, I also encourage people to take medication ARVs it's not like in the olden days you just take one and it's it's so nice taking your medication knowing that you are not judged for it people know that you are hiv positive and you don't have to hide because in the olden days people used to hide and say no i'm i'm only infected by tb now you can just take your arv it's one pill just one pill per day and you end up being undetectable like me uh, being undetectable, it means not by any chance will I infect anybody from now on. I would advise people to take their medication and know that there's life. The other thing is people must know that it's possible for you to date somebody who's HIV positive and you are HIV negative because there's PrEP for people who are negative and you can also have a family that is negative and you are positive. And it's not like the olden days, I'm still saying it, where people didn't know what to do if 
my husband or my girlfriend is negative and I'm positive. The CD4 count, uh, my CD4 count is high and my viral load is very low. This is why I'm saying I'm, I'm undetectable. The, the difference between the CD4 count and the viral load is that the CD4 counts needs to be high and the viral load needs to be 0 0.04 or 0 0.01. This is why I say I'm undetectable. That doesn't mean that I'm HIV negative. It just means that the HIV in me, it's not as strong as it used to be when my viral load was very high and my CD4 count was very low. I just hope that my story will encourage most people to be open about their status. My name is Lerato Rosemary Ramlaswani. I've been through the most.